Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we have something a little bit different again. We're going to do another sake review, but this time this one comes from Hokkaido. So we're going to Kunimaru Shuzo, who are apparently the northernmost sake brewery in Japan, and we're having a taste of their Kitano Takumi, which is a Honjozo sake. Now, as I've mentioned to you before, there are four types of sake the Junmai, which is the pure rice, the Honjozo, which is um, one where they add distilled alcohol to the brew, usually just a little bit, gives it a nice dry taste apparently, and you also get ginjo and dai ginjo, and those two styles are about how they mill the rice, and you can get combinations, so you can get junmai dai ginjo, junmai ginjo, honjozo ginjo, and all of this sort of thing, so yeah, it's quite an interesting little thing to try actually with uh, with all these different sakis. They're, they're quite similar, but they are different within their own right. The flavours in these are a lot more subtle than when you go between beer styles and things. So really looking forward to reviewing this one. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery where this one comes from. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the website for the brewery, the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Kunimari Shuzo. Very first time I'm trying one other things of course and there's all the usual social media so make sure you check that out go and check out my beer reviews as well and check out everything that's in the description below let me know some other sakes and nihon shoes and stuff that you guys would like to see me review as well i'm only just getting into these so your suggestions would be really much appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about kunimari shuzo so honma yasuzo founded the company as mariuchi honma shuzo back in 1849 and he'd moved to hokkaido from his native niigata prefecture back in 1842. Now the company is now based in Mashike in western Hokkaido but Yasuzo had previously worked for an export company and he realised that the sakis were very very expensive on Hokkaido because most of the breweries were actually on Japan's main islands and there was a huge cost associated with transporting the sake up to Hokkaido. So this made him want to found his own brewery and cut out that cost and make something, make something that he really enjoyed himself. So the original brewery apparently was in Moke on Hokkaido and in 1869 after 20 years in business the company had to increase their size of the brewery because the demand was increasing rapidly because of the exponential economic growth that Japan underwent. Apparently the fishing industry was just booming at the time and of course all the fishermen and things wanted something to drink so there was a huge increase in the number of sake breweries or Nihon Shu Kojo's as they say here in Japan. But the name Kunimari apparently comes from Nogi Marisuke, who was a soldier also known as Kaiten, who was a general in the Japanese Imperial Army and also a governor of Taimat. He was actually very well known for his exploits during the Russo-Japanese War in 1905. That was the one where the Russians uh, basically steamed their navy all the way around the world and the Japanese sank it in 45 minutes all over Manchuria and China. But apparently Yasuzo met the general at a funeral for a fallen soldier and he was really impressed with his personality and so decided to name his sake after him which is pretty cool and when I looked at the website they do four or five different sakes and this one as I say is their Honjozo which is meant to be quite nice it came highly recommended from the doe shop that I bought it from in BA up in Hokkaido they said that this was a nice one and I was determined I wanted this one because it was a different type from the ones that I'd looked at previously. So yeah, if you get the chance, have a look at Kunimari Shuzo. Apparently their stuff is very nice and we are gonna find out about this one soon. So this guy, as I mentioned to you, is a Honjozo Seishu, which means it's a pure um, Honjozo Sake. Um, but it's 16% ABV, which is a little bit higher than the ones I've reviewed for you before. And this one has rice where the grain is milled down to 65% of its original size so yeah this one it should be quite interesting i'll let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up let me just bring the camera up once again there you can see the artwork is quite nice the bottle has just been sweating a little bit since i've taken it out of the fridge usually i took it out of the fridge about an hour and a half ago just to let it warm up properly because i learned that you're not supposed to put honjozos in the fridge apparently they're better warm but there you can see like most sakes it does have quite a nice simple artwork there just with the kanji on the front and there it tells you all about the volume and things like that the 65 percent rice and 16 percent abv so yeah should be quite an interesting one plain bottle cap as you always get with these things the one thing that's a bit different about this is the bottle so this one has a green bottle rather than a clear bottle as i've had before so we'll get this guy out 
and we'll get into the glass and see how we get on. Really looking forward to trying my first Onjozo sake and also my first one from Hokkaido. So we'll get a little bit of this out and see how we get on. This looks really nice. So yeah, as you can see, if I hold this up, this one is actually really clear. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a yellowish colour from these ones, but this one is pretty clear. As you can see, if I hold that in front of me, you can see just how clear it is. There's not even a little yellow kind of tint to this one. Very, very clear sake. Put my finger behind it and just let you see that. But yeah, the thing you should rate sakes on, I've got the, th the variables here that you should rate it on. So you should think about a sake in terms of its floral flavours, tropical flavours, a little bit of earthiness, sweetness, dryness, acidity, the impact and also the tail. These are the main things you should talk about when it comes to the different flavours of sake. Apparently this style is supposed to be a little bit drier than other ones so we'll give it a go and see how we get on. So this one is the Kitano Takumi Ahonjozo Sake from Kunimari Shuzo in Mashike on Western Hokkaido, apparently the northernmost sake kojo or Nihonshu kojo in Japan, Kampai. Oh yeah, you, if you've tried a couple of sakes, you will realise when you try this one that it is considerably drier than the other styles that you're going to find. You notice that right away, just on the edge of the tongue, you can just feel that dryness coming out of this one, actually. But again, it's really nice. That's one of the more dangerous things about Nihonshu. It's, it's dangerous how easy it is to drink. You know, this is 16%. I'm actually feeling a little bit more alcohol warmth down here from this one than I have on previous ones. This one isn't quite as smooth as some of the others, but it really is kind of dangerous um, how drinkable these things are. They're really lovely. Mm. So I would say with this one, the impact is quite light. For me, there's not too much in the way of acidity in this one. This one comes across as being just a little bit more earthy and that kind of earthy character it's lingering for me um, just in the, the middle of the palate just towards the back actually there's not a lot of sweetness for this one it does come in a little bit sweet and then that just fades away I think it starts to become a little bit more floral if I'm honest as you get through it as you should always do with everything though sugar it around your palate and just notice the, the difference in the flavours but for me this one has a kind of earthy undertone to it. It's not quite as sweet as the Nigori Zaki that I had. Or the, I think the other one was a Junmai Daiginjo. Those are a little bit sweeter than this. This one is a little bit more earthy and you can really get the dryness coming out of this one. It's not acidic. I was expecting this one to be quite acidic with the dryness. I thought that usually, usually in beers of course, the acidity and the dryness kind of come together a little bit. From the And you do get some of that with the hoppy side of things as well. But of course that's not relevant for sake. But you can really detect that this style of sake is more dry than the others and it's not as sweet. But yeah, this one, it's really nice. But it's nice in a different way from the others. Like I say, the other ones were very good because of how sweet they were. This one is interesting because of the, the sort of floral character that you get and the sweetness that you do get a little bit of sweetness as a start then it fades away I think and becomes more floral and then as you move into the aftertaste it becomes a little bit more drier the dryness comes out later on which of course as I say this style is well known for and then you start to get the earthy aspects of it the impact is quite low I'd say you know it comes in nice and sweet and then it's in the aftertaste it's really the tail where uh, where all these kind of dry flavors come out and some of the earthiness but I mean, it's really nice. It's You can't see anything other than that about this sake. It's very, very nice. Mm. There was another one that was in the shop from these guys from Kunimari Shuzo. And the guy who helped me, he spoke English as well, which was nice. He actually was telling me that the other one is better than this. And if this is one, the other one I think was around 1900 yen or 1800 yen. This one I think was 1200 if I'm not mistaken, but for 1200 yen, this is actually one of the cheaper sakes 
usually you'll pay around 1500 yen for a kind of for a sake but of course you can get the ones that go up to two three four five thousand yen and things but this one for a cheaper sake as well is pretty good actually we'll give it we'll take a little bit more of this and see how we get on but this is really nice certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again the aroma is interesting as well because you know you smell the rice out of this one you can smell a little bit I want to say you can actually smell a little bit the floral character from this sake but it's nice you know you get a little bit of I think there's a wee tiny bit of citrus in there as well but you can smell that this one it does smell less sweet as well than the other ones I've come across but it's really really nice this, the flavour differences, as I say, between the sake styles are a lot different from beer. They are a lot more subtle, so you have to have, you know, you have to really refine your palate and get used to these. But the, as I say, the thing you'll find with sake, it is absolutely lovely, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again. The Kitano Takumi from uh, from Kunimari Shuzo in Hokkaido. This is absolutely lovely. So if you get the chance make sure you try out this one for yourself. As I say, I think this one is a bit less sweet. It's a little bit more earthy. The tail the tail is where you get some of these earthy flavours coming out and it's a bit more dry. The Honjozo style, as I'm told, is more dry than the other ones, but it's absolutely lovely. Give it a go for yourself and see how you get on. Mm. I think as well, it becomes a little bit sweeter as you go through it your mouth just adjusts to it a bit more and those floral characters start to come out but overall it's very very nice and I cer certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again I'd love to try some of the other styles from this brewery and see how they actually come out too but yeah absolutely lovely so yes the Kitano Takumi from Kunimari Shuzo on Hokkaido apparently a very very good sake brewery on the basis of this one I would have to agree there and hopefully I can try some more of their sakis in the very near future. So yeah, and thank you for watching one of my sake reviews. Hopefully I can do more of these for you fairly soon. I do enjoy doing these, but sake of course in Europe is pretty hard to get. But do give me some suggestions of other sake breweries to have a look at. Let me know your own thoughts on this particular sake and the other ones from Kunimari Shuzo in the, in the comment section below. Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, but until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do check out all my usual social media things and let me know some other lovely sakes that I should be reviewing here. Just be careful with these because at 16% they are a bit dangerous because of how easy they go down, but they're absolutely lovely. But avoid Shochu and Awamori. I've found those are very bad, but the Shuzo is pretty damn nice actually so until the next time kampai and i hope you've enjoyed my one of my first sake reviews do let me know your thoughts on it slanja kampai